So welcome to SACADMIC. So in this lecture, I'll be explaining the design of G plus two RCSA building using thumb rule. Uh, I have received so many requests regarding uh, this design of G plus two RCSA building. So I have already uploaded G plus one RCSA building using a thumb rule, and I've already uploaded G plus six RCSA building design using Stadpro. So the complete analysis, design, and detailing we have com uh, completed in Stadpro using this detailing using AutoCAD. So in this video, this G plus two ground floor plus two RCC building, I'll be doing based on general thumb rule and ex ex experience. So based on thumb rule, just say that is thumb rule. So few basic things which I have missed uh, this uh, after so many suggestions, so many you know queries. I, I just want to make this video very clear regarding this G plus two. RCC building. So first in, in a building design we have slab design, beam design, column design and footing design. So this is a grid spacing. So your grid spacing this this design valid for grid spacing grid spacing maximum 5 meter. Better you keep 4.5 meter. Uh, my design will be a bit conservative because we don't want to compromise on safety so no compromise on safety no compromise on safety so the design will be little bit conservative if you want optimized design then you you need to go for a structural consultant advice so for thumb rule and if you're designing your own house then i i would suggest better go for this conservative design so the grid spacing maximum 5 meter and it, you should limit up to 4.5 meters so there are certain things I just want to list down in this first uh, top, first uh, part that minimum grade of concrete should be 20 MPA in case if you get 25 MPA then it is better that is it is better if you get 25 MPA but 20 MPA is okay minimum grade of state 415 MPA minimum so don't use mild steel ms 250 please don't use for this design for earthquake regarding earthquake zone up to this this design is valid up to zone 3 so for zone 4 and 5 you have to take advice of structural consultant structural consultant so zone 4 and 5 you need to take advice from structural consultant and also when you you finalize the design you need to show this to civil engineer or structural engineer so better you just uh, confirm from them but this design is valid up to zone 3 so ne next we'll be talking about the min first we will first we will go for slab the minimum depth of foundation and also like minimum grade of steel concrete there is a criteria as per is 1904 is 1904 is for foundation design so the minimum depth below ground that is the natural ground that is the original soil uh, that is mother soil you can say so below that this is ground level so below that minimum 5.5 meter that means for 500 mm or 50 centimeter you have to go this much depth minimum so this is the criteria for foundation now slab for slab slab just we have a thumb rule uh, l by 30 l is effective length we have uploaded a video on thumb rule of thumb rule to calculate size so you can refer those videos so we are keeping a slab depth of 150 mm deep reinforcement in slab 10 mm dia bar at 150 center to center both ways so in case you are providing a uh, two-way slab so you need to take care of the torsion reinforcement at edges so this i have only considered the main bar both ways so in case your uh, slab is two way then you have to consider this torsion reinforcement so slab depth 
150 mm reinforcement reinforcement 10 mm dia at 150 cm now we'll, we'll move to uh, beam so for beam up to 4.5 meter we have again this thumb rule l by l is effective so this based on this thumb rule it is coming around 375 mm so this should be minimum but your beam carries a udl of your wall so if you are using a lightweight lightweight brick then you can optimize this otherwise you have to use this size that is 230 mm wide and 500 mm depth so this should be the size of your beam beam we have two types of reinforcement top reinforcement and bottom reinforcement because the top zone is your compression and bottom is your tension in case of normal beam like normal simple beam so for that your top reinforcement compression zone you need less reinforcement so you provide two numbers of 12 mm dia bar for bottom reinforcement that is tension zone so you require more number of steel bar so three numbers of 16 dia bar stirrups use 10 mm at 100 mm center center as per ductile detailing the 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 reinforcement the stirrup should be the the spacing of stirrups at the edges should be less than 150 mm criteria since we are dealing in zone up to zone 3 so we are covering this ductile clause also so please and also when providing this minimum reinforcement this reinforcement you need to con consider please confirm minimum reinforcement criteria as per standard like as per IS 456 or any international standard if you are referring so this is beam beam size 230 by 500 reinforcement top two numbers 12 dar and bottom three numbers 16 dia stirrups 10 mm at 100 mm center center so this is your beam now we'll move to column so column column we are providing for g plus 2 300 by 600 so this is for uh, m 20 grade of concrete so if you are increasing the concrete then you can optimize the size but generally as per is 456 minimum grade of concrete should be m 20 so this is the size of column 300 by 600 this is again you have to check for short column l by 12 that is your slenderness ratio so based on this your column size will come that should if that this that that is coming greater than 600 uh, then it will be then you have to revise your size so this this should be the least lateral dimension this slenderness ratio is least lateral dimension so this should come less than 300 if it is coming more than 300 uh, then you have to revise so for this design up to 3200 mm height of column we are providing 300 by 600 column size reinforcement you provide 12 numbers 20 mm dia bar main bar if, if you want to optimize then try to keep the reinforcement range up to 2% of your cross section area is 2% of cross section stirrups again 10, 10 mm dia bar at 100 center center keeping that ductile detailing clause of this confinement re reinforcement spacing shall be less than 150 mm center to center so column sizing for g plus 2 300 by 600 your reinforcement main reinforcement 12 numbers 20 dar 20 mm dia bar and the the stirrups 10 mm at 100 mm center to center so this is column now we'll immediately move to foundation so foundation is basically that based on your soil type if your soil type is good if it does not come under marshy land or marine clay 
or and where your SBC is less than 15 ton SBC should not be less than 15 ton square per square meter so these three things you have to consider this soil should be as uh, should be good soil should not come under marshy land it should not be in uh, uh, in marine clay the SBC should not be less than 15 ton square so for SBC recommendation you can refer 1940 1978 IS code so they have uh, they have uh, recommended some SBC for a particular soil type I'll just show you once I'm done with this so for G plus 2 RCC building grade M20 keep the foundation size 3 meter by 3 meter width your depth of this raft shall be 600 mm that is 0.6 meter the, the foundation should be 1.5 meter below your ground level so this is ground level so it should be below so since this is a, a, a two, sto two story G plus two, so we are providing a top as well as bottom reinforcement because there, there may be chances due to seismic or wind, there will be an uplift generated. So based on that uplift, we are providing reinforcement at top also and bottom also. So for bottom, we are providing 20 mm dia bar at 200 center center. And for top, we are providing 16 mm dia bar at 200 mm center to center both ways. So we have to provide a mesh, mesh of 20 mm at 200 center center at bottom and same mesh of 16 mm dia bar at 200 mm center to center at top. So this, this design is valid up to zone 3 seismic uh, zone so this this G plus 2 we have covered uh, uh, slab beam and co column and foundation design so these designs are valid up to zone 3 but but if if you find any any discrepancy in your region your regional your soil property anything if you are if you, you, you if you are using for industrial purpose or anything like that please consult a local civil engineer or structural engineer and please get these designs verified so that your design your your design is safe and in case in future you won't get any uh, any failure structural failure talking that I'll, I'll show you at the end of this lecture that bearing capacity recommendation as per IS 1904-1978 so this code you now this code has been updated so, we, so it has uh, come 1986 and further so uh, you'll get this recommendation on your NPTEL uh, module lecture 17 bearing capacity section 17.1 introduction so table presumptive, be presumptive bearing capacity values as per IS 1904-1978 so if you are having a rock then 3 to 4 kilonewton per meter square so you can convert it to ton per meter square or kg per meter square so this is the this is the recommended bearing capacity as per your soil type so based on this if if you have very soft clay then your bearing capacity is 5 tons so in that case our design won't be valid so even if you are having soft clay then it is having 10 ton uh, soft shell stiff clay this is not valid so after so beyond this we can we can go for our design which i have explained so in case if you have any doubt any query regarding this g plus tool you can anytime uh, raise your query we will try to clarify and please suggest if we are missing something we will come up with improved version of our uh, lectures so 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 you'll get a better idea of what we are trying to convey uh, through our lectures. So thank you. Have a nice day. Take care and goodbye.